to have a presentation today about grace, seeing that 500 years ago, the Reformation officially started. So, I think it's a good idea to start with what the definition of grace is. When I was looking for grace, I saw many, many definitions. So I found, I found the best from Webster's and Collins that combined them. So, 
This is what matrices and columns both agree on. Favorable influence of God, divine influence or the influence of the Spirit in renewing the heart and restraining from sin. Two, the application of Christ's righteousness to the sinner. Three, spiritual instruction, improvement, and edification. And four, the divine assistance and power given to man in spiritual rebirth and sanctification. So in all these definitions, you see God's power, God's merit being imputed to the sinner. And also I like Strong's, so I like Strong's as well. The Greek word is charis, which means graciousness, as in gratifying. So it's a manner of act, whether abstract, abstract or concrete, literal, figurative or spiritual, especially the divine influence on the heart and reflection in the life or in gratitude. Some English words you can have of this great word charis is acceptable, benefit, favor, gift, grace, graciousness, liberality, even, and thanks and thanks worthy. So now that the framework and the foundation has been laid, I think we can continue to what does this entail? It's a good question, isn't it? My main text is found in Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9, which reads thus, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works that any man should boast. So we see that grace is a gift. We cannot work out our own growth, work out our own salvation through our works. In Romans 3 verse 20, this is further shown by saying, By the deeds of the law there shall be no flesh be justified in sight. By the law is the knowledge of sin. So the law is only an education of what sin is. You cannot use the law just to justify yourself. And speaking of which, I actually found a pretty powerful quote from Martin Luther. He wrote this in 1535, and he once wrote, God never gave to any person grace and everlasting life as a reward for merit. Those who seek to earn the grace of God by their own efforts are trying to please God with their sins. Quite something, eh? And there's some more verses showing how grace is free. It's a gift. We read in Romans 3 verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And, and in Ephesians 4 verse 7, but every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. So, again, we can see that grace is merely a gift. We cannot do anything of, of our own selves. So now that we see that we cannot work out our own salvation, how does grace and how should grace affect us? In Acts 15 verse 11, like the Apostle Paul writes, but we believe that through the grace of the Lord to Jesus Christ we shall be saved, even as they. So grace should show. By having grace, we should believe that we will be saved. In 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, if we, uh, the Apostle Paul also writes, And said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest on me. The Apostle Paul writes, is now writing that his grace is sufficient for us and that we need strength. What strength do we need? If we have grace, what do we do? What can we do? The Apostle Paul continues to write in 2 Corinthians sorry, 9 verse 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Now, doesn't that sound look like an oxymoron? We just told we cannot be saved by works, and now he's saying that we have to be doers. He further writes, and I find this part very interesting. Um, again, just as advocate, uh, to continue with the thought, in Romans 6, verses 1 and 2, he writes, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer there? So we have to. Again, work to obey the law, and as as we know from one John three verse four, sin is, is the transgression of the law. And Sister White, writing about grace and what we should do with grace, 
once wrote, The Lord has shown me that his grace is sufficient for all our trials, and that they are greater than ever before. Yet if we trust only in God, we can overcome every temptation, and through his grace, the more victorious. So, by having grace, we need to be victorious, overcoming sin. And Sister White further writes, Obedience to the law is the standard held up before us. There is no reason why we should be transgressors. We may be Christians in every sense of the word. By constant prayer, we are to bring Christ into our lives. From him, we are to receive the grace that will enable us to overcome. Only by receiving this grace can we go on from strength to strength and gain fitness, gain a fitness for eternal life. We shall have conflicts and temptations to meet, and we are to meet them in the spirit of Christ. The Savior says, my grace is sufficient. So the Lord is telling us that we need to obey the commandments. You may be sinners, yes, but we have to get up again and to obey his law. But that's, we don't just end there either. The Apostle Peter now writes, in 2 Peter 3 verse 18, But grow in grace, and in the knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So not only must we obey, but we need to grow. But how do we grow? We find the answer in 2 Peter verses 1, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 5 to 7. Add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Okay. So, but uh, how? Why must we do this? I mean, is there a ready point? The Apostle Peter also wrote that in 2 Peter 1 verse 9 that okay, he wrote, But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was saved from his old sins. So if we just sit back and say, okay, all grace is okay, we don't have to worry, just stay where you are. The, the Apostle Peter is telling us that we are blind and that we've forgotten that we've been saved. So to edify us, to grow, to grow, to grow up our gratitude to the Lord for what we, for what He has done for us. And what happens if we do these things? What if, what happens when we grow, when we obey the Lord? My last verse is to two Peter one verse ten, which writes, "If ye do these things, we shall never fall." This is wonderful hope, and I pray that. We will grow in grace and, and pray that, and that we will meet again and have it someday. Amen. Amen. Amen.